my name's Gordon. Um, I'm actually from Cork, believe it or not. And uh, I have to come to Dublin to be part of this. Um, I saw this movie about uh, six or seven years ago. It's a, a scene from a movie called The Last Samurai. And uh, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but this scene is where East meets West. And there was a sword that was given. And um, I kind of feel today is a little bit like that. I mean, who would have thought five years ago that we would have all these acupuncturists inside in an IVF clinic, you know? So to see that is, is, is pretty amazing. So I kind of, the last 10 minutes I went looking for that image because uh, I thought it was appropriate just to see that. So thank you, David Watch, for inviting us here today. So you meet, you connect, you fall in love, you commit, you marry. Sometimes you create. And a lot of our patients that we see on a daily basis, they feel like they're being punched by this guy when they're not pregnant. And it's easy for me to see the creation of life and how amazing it is because a lot of the time when I work with patients, I get to see fertility, I get to see pregnancy, I get to see babies. Um, our patients don't, won't see that. Um, so I have a quick question for you. Does anyone know who this guy is? Yeah, Gordon Ramsay. Yes. He has 15 Michelin stars of work at his restaurants. And in the work that he does, he is known for his ingredients and what he provides. I promise you this is going somewhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and this is Dr. David Walsh. Oh. So let's imagine for a day that they actually switch jobs. Okay? And that Gordon Ramsay is now the clinical director of SIMS IVF. What would be the most important thing to Gordon's success within Sims? Considering they're doing pioneering research, they have an amazing medical team, and they have the most advanced technology. For me, I think it's the ingredients that are being provided. So you can see this beautiful egg, you can see this gorgeous sperm. What actually would happen if we got this and we gave this to Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. So the question I'm asking you here today is, what ingredients are your patients bringing to your clinic? We typically see poor sperm quality, whether it's motility, whether it's morphology, whether it's count issues. We're seeing more and more of egg quality issues due to maternity and due to age. We're seeing a lot of hormonal imbalances, so high FSH, LH issues, we're seeing progesterone issues, we're seeing uh, prolactin issues. We're seeing more and more low AMH, and this is kind of something that will allow us to predict how well an IVF cycle is doing. We're also seeing immune issues, and for me, with immune issues, I think that's the new kid in the block. I think it's going to revolutionize the unexplained infertility diagnosis. And I think, for me, we really need to look at more education. Not for our patients, I actually think for our doctors. Because I think sometimes, when you have a 50-50 split, with doctors saying, there's an immune issue, and then they go to another doctor, and it's not, we don't believe in it. I really true believe, truly believe that belief systems need to stay in religion, not in medicine. So that was my big point for today. <laughs> so some of the ingredients that we can actually work with. So um, when it comes to sperm, there are three main causes that I can see. One is trauma, whether it be a varicocele, whether it be uh, an injury due to a rugby game, and then there's environmental issues. And the environmental issues are smoking, drugs, uh, drinking, and that's something I think that can definitely be worked on one third of the time. We have hormones where there's an issue with progesterone, there's an issue with prolactin, there's an issue with LH. And with progesterone, you have things like gestone, you have cyclogest with uh, looking at hormone issues or ovulation issues, we can do use comet. And then, um, unfortunately, FSH is something we can't really deal with. The uterus is an area that for us as practitioners it is an area we can work with in that we have an amazing diagnostic tool in how we question our patients. So normally when you question a patient and you ask how was your period, they would say, you know, it's normal and most people move on, whereas we don't. We go a little bit deeper. We ask about how many days is it? Is it a one day? Is it a five day? We ask about the colour and constitution. Is it red? Is it brown? Is it black? We would then, um, you know, with our treatment strategies work to improve those kind of things to help implantation. We have the fertile mind, which I think is really important to that mindset for our patients to have a fertile mind and believe that they can do this. And of course, we have the fertile body that we like to work with. 
So, I have a little video I want to show you. I actually have to go over here because we had a problem technically this morning, so I need to. And this guy actually is the reason that I'm doing acupuncture, which is kind of unusual.我觉得大家还觉得不够快其实在这方面我觉得中华民族的祖先早就有他非常了不起的智慧十多年来的紧张生活能够让我依然如此的这种充满激情的这种工作依然永远不害怕竞争永远不断去想新的办法这跟我学习太极拳是很有关系也许我到了这个年龄了更加能满足到我也相信绝大部分经过十年二十年努
I said to her, yeah, let's go for it. Let's give this a shot. Let's give it four months. Let's try and get two periods from four months. Let's get three minutes six. And he turned around and he said, Gordon, it's easy for you to be positive. I'm the one that has to pick up these pieces, and this doesn't work. She had a baby boy uh, on June 17th, naturally. Um, she got pregnant in the fourth month. She actually went to another clinic in Cork, we won't mention her name, um, uh, to get checked. And the doctor said to her, um, which clinic did you go to? And she was like, well, I got pregnant naturally. And he said, you can't. I've been trying for 15 years. And you can tell me, it's okay. If it sins, it's okay. I don't mind, you know? Um, and she said, no, I got pregnant naturally. And I used acupuncture and I lost weight and I looked after my nutrition. And apparently acupuncture doesn't work. So she's still in shock. Now, what actually happened for her was she had a thing where we would look at blood deficiency and blood stasis. And our treatment strategy was acupuncture twice a month for three months, and then she was pregnant for the four. She's one of my favorite cases. I think integration of acupuncture is really important. No animals were hurt doing this, by the way. Um, so it's uh, one of those things that I think there is a big question out there, does acupuncture work? Now, I know there's certain people here, so we know it works. Um, and I do apologize for my presentation the way I'm going to present this next. But I want to try and make this a little bit more scientific. I think it's really important that we start to speak the language of what we're working with rather than assuming they're going to understand. So, I'd like you to imagine a little boy or a little girl. And they're under the tricycle. And they're cycling down a hill and they fall over. And suddenly they cut their hand and their knee. And they start to cry. And they're, they're bleeding. Does anybody know what happens next within the body? We get an increase of blood supply, the immune system kicks in to prevent infection, the healing system kicks in, and then the brain will release serotonin and endorphins to relax the body. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> now, if we were to scientifically look at acupuncture and say that we're creating microtraumas, little mini injuries, there's an increase of blood supply, the immune system kicks in, the healing system kicks in. That would really go down a long way to explaining what we're doing. And I, I understand we have meridians, I understand we have chi and we have blood, but this is what I think is happening on a Western level. So the rumours are untrue. I don't have magic needles. It's all down to the body healing itself. Ryan Giggs, one of the most successful football players, says his career is based on yoga. That's why he's so successful. If you don't like acupuncture and you hate needles, try reflexology. Nutrition, really, really important. Jane came into me there um, about a year ago. Now, most of the issues were actually down to her partner. Um, he had poor sperm quality, the count was low, the motility was low, and morphology was about 2%. Um, and they had done a number of IVFs, so the next step actually was to do ICSI. So we decided on doing three to four months of um, acupuncture, and we did some supplementation. I think within five months, he'd gone up to 62 million. Now, the main things that we had worked with is that we had taken out um, his mobile phone out of his pocket, increased water content, supplements, nutrition, and acupuncture twice a month. This is actually what we used. I think most of us on, on the internet are and you can see a good multivitamin, a large amount of carcinine, um, maca, omega 3 CoQ10, increased water content, and reducing the alcohol. Love nutrition, really, really important. Energy out is not always equal to energy in. You saw from the video how busy people are. We're constantly on the go. We're constantly drinking coffee. We're constantly just thinking, overthinking, overanalyzing, over worrying. This is all energy out. And then we have coffee in the morning, sandwich in the afternoon, maybe two more coffees. That's the energy in. We're getting deficient. We're not pro producing enough energy to support the energy out levels. So I think it's really important that we start to educate our patients on what's actually going on within their bodies. <clears throat> Highly recommend a fertility nutritionist. Um, we work with um, the Denver Clinic in Cork, and they're amazing. Um, they are doing some just amazing stuff for their patients, and you know, I just think it's brilliant. Their energy. We all know how important it is for us to exercise. We all know that it's important to get out there two to three times a week. So get our patients walking. They don't need to go to the gym. They don't need to, you know, hire a, an expert. Get them swimming. I wouldn't recommend this for men though, because you know, if there are some issues, then we do know that this can cause a bit of a problem. 
get our patients to start today because they're all making excuses why they shouldn't improve. Working with your mind. Anya was a patient. Um, she had elevated natural cells. She had high FSH. She was emotionally exhausted and suffering from fear and sadness and anxiety. She had a kidney deficiency, liver cheese stagnation, and blood deficiency that we were working with. And I have to admit that acupuncture wasn't going to fix that. Um, all I can say is thank God for SIMS because with their immune therapy, they were able to deal with all those issues there. My goal really was to work with her on a, an emotional level and deal with a lot of the anxiety and stress that she was suffering from. I get my patients to try hypnosis. I'm actually qualified in the therapist as well. Um, hypnosis isn't about turning into a chicken. It's basically breaking patterns. It's working with the fear and the anxiety of never having a baby. It's working with the stress levels. And also we do NLP in the, in the office. So NLP basically is working with how people process information. So for example, you might have a patient that comes into you and says, my husband doesn't love me anymore. And you go to the next room, and the husband says, my wife doesn't love me anymore. And then you go back into her and you ask, how do you know your husband doesn't love you anymore? And basically she say, he hasn't spoke to me about love and how he cares about me in the last six months. The husband would say, she hasn't touched me in six months. She's auditory, he's kinesthetic. And basically they speak different languages. So all you've got to do is tell him that he loves his wife and get her to hug him and everything is great. <laughs> <laughs> Try meditation. Um, meditation isn't about going into a room and humming for 10 minutes. Meditation is about taking time out. It's about going and walking. It's about just being with yourself and caring. Or is this you? Is this your patience? Is this what's coming into you? This is what's coming into me. Mindful or mindful? I love this image because as human beings, we tend to process information in a timeline. In the past, in the present, and the future. A lot of time when people spend a lot of time in the past, they tend to lead towards depression sometimes. If they lean towards the future, they suffer from anxiety. So if we can get our patients in the here and now, that can really help. Um, I had a, a patient who lost her baby um, after two days uh, of birth. Uh, his name was Michael. And she spent three years trying afterwards. She was absolutely traumatized. Um, and I did a thing called timeline therapy with her, which basically was I wanted her to define to me where her future was physically. So she said, it's here. And I wanted her to tell me where her past was. And she said, let's wrap around me. Now most people go forward, back, left, right. Um, and I said to her, where's Michael? And she said, he wrapped around me. So I asked her, would you mind just giving me a new timeline? Either left, right, or behind. And she said, okay, I'll go behind. And I said, could we for a moment move Michael there? Just in the past and give a bit of space for a new child. Within three months she was pregnant naturally. No, all I was trying to do was to get her to break that pattern of her being stuck in that moment with where Michael was. Do not stress about being stressed. That much does your stress levels, much. We all have between four and five personal stresses on a day by day basis. We have work stress, we have family stress, we have financial stress, only fertility stress. It's not the stress that's causing the problem, it's this fight or flight, which in turn shuts down the reproductive system. So if you can imagine a deer prancing around the fields in nature, and it's in heat, and suddenly a tiger jumps out, it's going to run, it's going to come out of heat, and it's not going to get pregnant. With our patients, they're constantly running, and the tiger is in fertility. They're finding it really hard to get pregnant. You're not a robot. Emotions are normal. Angry people live in an angry world. Sad people live in a sad world. Fearful people live in a fearful world. We see these patients every single day. They're terrified they're never going to become a family. They're terrified they're going to miscarry. The minute they find out they're pregnant, straight into fear. Happy people live in a happy world. It's the same world for everyone. You just see it differently. Live your own world. This process isn't going to work for everybody. It'll probably work for about 30% of our patients, maybe 40% of our patients. And if any of those problems promising 70% success rate, run from them. That's not going to happen. Our patients
patients need to work with to support therapy experts like you guys. Not the crazy ones. So here's the promise. Improving your patients' ingredients will not make things worse. And today, when you look at what we have here, we've got a two-sided coin. We've got Eastern medicine, we've got Western medicine, and basically we have patient care as the coin. We're all doing our best there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to have everyone here today and working together, you know. And let's keep Gordon happy. <laughs> I wish you health, and I wish you happiness.